Hi, this is Marlon and we're back at the mixer now. So let's talk about our setup. Let's go to our scenes and let's make sure that we have loaded scene number four. We're going to hit recall and let's go to our uh, processing and let's make sure that we have some channels selected. So I'm going to select channel one and three and four and uh, let's go over a scenario. So let's do the scenario. We have uh, maybe six singers that are singing in these mics and um, we have them adjusted in the house here and the volume that we like is somewhere around there. Now again, remember that these singers are not able to hear themselves as clearly because they are behind the main speakers. So in order to have them hear themselves through the monitors, we will have to pick this mix button one. So mix button one uh, is different from the main mix, right? This is what our main mixer is sending out to the main speakers, but mix one at this point, nothing is being sent to that monitor one, which is on the left, and monitor two has nothing. So let's go to monitor one, which is on our left, and we're going to adjust these to say, I want this much volume to go to that monitor to the people that are on stage. And I can go to my mix two and say, I want this much uh, vo volume going to them. And then I go back to the house. I would say I'm going to balance the house settings uh, for in, in this way. So Literally, we have three mixes set up, our main mix, our monitor one mix, and our monitor two mix. Uh, let me talk about some scenarios that may happen. Let's go back to mix one. Let's put some singers on one through five. And I know uh, uh, Becky sometimes plays flute. So we're going to say uh, on flute, uh, I'm in mix one. Uh, so we need to hear the vocalists need to hear themselves. Uh, but when the flute player um, maybe they don't need to hear themselves because again, they're, they're playing an acoustic instrument. It's making its own sound. So maybe we don't need enough that much monitor of the flute in there uh, because again, we can hear it acoustically. Uh, but for example, maybe there was someone on the edge, the keyboard player, and they're saying, hey, I need more flute. Uh, what we can do in that scenario, maybe they're closer to the uh, monitor on the right side. We can simply just boost it so that it's coming out stronger in that one. So we can see how we have different speakers, how we can set up different things, and how we can adjust it to meet the needs of the performers on stage. So that's mix one and mix two. Let me just remind you of a couple important things. When we switch to our layers, I want you to notice that we have our effects, a one, two, three, four, set to about a little bit under zero, the, also our sins, but mix one and mix master two, these are also going to be set about zero. If they are on mute, you may not be hearing what's coming in the monitors. They need to be unmuted. Uh, and then we'll go back to our, uh, our ch uh, ch uh, channel one, uh, one through 24. Let me show you a couple of other things that are very important in setting up a, a mix monitor is this microphone. Okay. So what you should do when you come on a Sunday morning or whatever you're performing for, what you should do is this, turn off your master, okay? Don't worry about that. Switch into your mix one, go ahead and cut everybody down, and then begin with your talk back microphone. Say to singer number one, test your microphone, make sure the volume, you're getting a good signal, right? You're testing, you test, test, test. You see an ample signal, and then go to mix one and begin to adjust the volume for them and say, can you hear yourself? Is that good enough? And then you adjust it how much? Go on to your second performer, right? Your third performer, fourth performer. Begin to have them there and then maybe, you know, uh, depending on where they're standing, which monitor they need to hear themselves more, you can make an adjustment. So make sure that you're setting up your monitors before you set up your house because they're hearing something totally different than that main mix. So make them happy by setting up their mix one and mix two so that they can hear themselves adequately and then go ahead pull up your mains and then begin to have them maybe test their mic again so now you're you are when they're rehearsing they're happy they're hearing everything they want in these mixes but now you're going to have to make everybody else happy in the sanctuary where you are blending them uh, and making it sound uh, more feasible again one more important thing you got to remind yourself that uh, you do not run these monitors, mix one and mix two, so loud that when you come to add the house in there, 
you know, you're, you're adding such little because you're making these so, so hot, so high. Uh, you want to be careful because um, those little speakers are not full range speakers and the audience will be hearing reflected sound rather than direct sound. So again, those are some uh, simple advice on setting up your monitor mix. Let me give you one more scenario that might be helpful. Let's say we have a singer and uh, it's the end of the service uh, or maybe it's at offering time. So for fun, I'm just gonna mute all these because our singer is gonna use microphone number six. And uh, right, and so that means we will have to have them have their volume up here, right? They're gonna have to hear themselves. But they're also going to be using a track. We're going to play the audio from the back in our stereo three input. So I'm going to switch to stereo three input right here. And I'm going to make sure that they have to hear themselves in the monitor. So I'm going to hit mix one. And again, the same way, I'm going to make stereo three in there as well. And I'm going to ask them, you know, with the talkback microphone, as I play the music to, for them to cue and rehearse, is that loud enough? Because maybe they need less. Maybe they need more. Or maybe I've had this where some songs start off so soft and I need to make sure that they hear more monitor at the beginning of a song. So I might not be, when the song starts, I set the song in the main at this level. But when it comes to the beginning, if I don't give them a little extra boost in that monitor, they may miss their cue. They may start the song late. And it's very embarrassing if they don't know what's going on. Uh, so again, you as, as, a, as a mix engineer, are gonna to have to help the performer sometimes to hear themselves. But again, stereo track three, I have the volume and, uh, and then they can hear themselves. So uh, yeah, channel six or singing. So you'll have to coordinate again, switching between these, but the more you practice, the better you will be. Let me teach you one last thing before we go. And that is setting up your mix in pre-fade or post-fade. So let me describe what pre-fade. Pre-fade, meaning that this is a fader and this is a fader. This is your main master fader and these are your channel faders. When you set up a channel in pre-fade, what that means is the volume that is sent to the mixes is not altered when you change the fader in the master section, okay? So that means that I have my master or main speakers and I'm controlling this volume, I'm making it louder or I'm making it softer, that will not change the volume sound in mix one and two when something is sent to pre-fade. When something is sent to post-fade, and I'll show you how to do that. For example, let's, let's get uh, channel number six selected and I hit routing. Right now, mix one and two are sent to pre-fade. If I wanna set it to post-fade, I hit those buttons and I exit out of my routing. What that now means is that this fader, when I am in the master section, if I move louder or softer, it will affect the volume that goes into mix one and two. Now again, you're not gonna actually see it move up and down. I'm gonna cut it all the way down here. You're gonna see that strong volume there. But the processing that happens here, the singer uh, will hear less of themselves in the monitor in the post fade, meaning that the fader here is really gonna affect the volume levels that are sent here. Now, those are preferences that you need to decide on how you want to use them. Uh, most performers like pre-fade. I'm just gonna hit set them to pre-fade. Uh, one of the reasons pre-fade is often preferred sometimes is that, for example, um, this is set to pre-fade let's uh, mix one let's let's pretend i got a singer here and mix one and mix two uh, if i need to um, cut something off here if that person is still singing or performing they can still hear themselves so that's helpful sometimes again um, if i just want to cut somebody out of the house but they still need to hear the monitors uh, for example your band uh, they're rehearsing and uh, I don't, they need to go over something but they need to hear themselves on the stage but we don't need to hear them in the pre-fade. I can just cut them in the main mix, even cut this, but they'll still be hearing themselves in the monitors, okay? Uh, the post-fade uh, is sometimes helpful for balancing and mixing 
Uh, you'll have to look on a line to see what works for your situation. But for the most situations that I've worked with, the pre-fade is, is, is commonly used, but uh, very thankful that we do have a post-fade position because that can uh, help in certain circumstances. So that's your mixing board, uh, that's your system. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learn it well. I hope you feel comfortable with it. Again, the key to this is practice and using this mic and really as an engineer, encourage your performers to hear themselves, talk back and forth with them because the more you make them feel comfortable and happy with what they're hearing, they will perform better. And then as long as you are taking care of this, if they feel happy, <laughs> it's funny, I've had this where me as a performer, um, my mix monitor was great and it was everything, but the house people, then the audience, they were saying, oh, it just sounded horrible. I couldn't tell if it was horrible or not because I was literally on stage only hearing what I could hear in the monitors and it was great. So as an engineer, you want to make these people happy and you want to make the other people happy. And when you do that, you're going to have a great sound. And it's going to be a great experience. So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, learn well and I encourage you to keep learning.